My name is Joni Martin. I'm an independent Stamping Up demonstrator who loves to play with paper. Today, I'm going to show you how to make these two pretty cards using the gold card bases and matching envelopes. As you watch my video, I will be sharing tips to make your paper crafting easier and your projects look great. Let's get started. First of all, I want to tell you a little bit about these gold cards and envelopes. They're in our holiday catalog. Uh, you can find them on page 51 and you get 10 cards and 10 envelopes. Speaking of the holiday catalog, do you have our August to December 2020 mini catalog? If you don't have the catalog and don't have a Stamping Up demonstrator, just message me. I'd love to get you this great catalog. Your card bases come with a front that already has a little bit of gold trim and they come scored. So they're very easy to fold and they have the matching gold envelopes which are really easy to write on. We've already tried that out. So let's make our first card. For our first card, I'm using papers from the Gilded Autumn Suite. That also is in the August to 20 mini catalog. And the nice thing about these papers is, one side is what you think of as your standard print paper and the other side has a touch of metallic. They're beautiful papers. I'm also using a piece of the brushed metallic cardstock. This is great paper. It's easy to work with and it has a bit of a brushed look to it, which is nice because it doesn't always pick up some of the things when you're using foil. So that works great. Let's get started. You can find all the dimensions for my project at www.scrappingwithjoni.com. I have a card base. I have a piece of the brush metallic, which is cut three by four. And then I have a, a really cute little print from here that has acorns and leaves on it. I'm going to die cut a leaf shape here. And I'm using the stitched leaves dies. I'm going to grab this one and I'm bringing out our new cut and emboss machine. Have you seen this yet? Oh, it works so nice. Let's see if I can get it in a place where, under the camera where you can see it. One of the things I love about it is the plate tells me exactly what I need. And since I'm die cutting, I'm going to need plate one, which I have here, my cutting plate, which is two, and then I'm going to need two number threes. I'm laying three down first. I'm laying down my brushed metallic paper. And then to cut these, this is an insert that embosses while you're cutting. And I love that look. So I'm going to lay that down first, then lay this on top of it. And now this plate. And all I'm going to do is run it through. I'm going to move my machine just so I don't hit my camera stand. That would not be pretty. There we go. So when I take it apart, get all these pieces out of the way. I have this beautiful leaf, which I'll be showing you another project in a different video that I'm using the leaves for. What we want is this card front. I'm going to get my dies out of the way. And I want this piece to go under here. And I'm going to use some Stampin' Dimensionals, which are really, think of them like foam with sticky on both sides. And often when we use these, we put them on the back of our paper. This time, I'm going to put them on the front because I want them to go between my paper and that pretty leaf cutout. And because this paper is slightly smaller than the leaf cutout, I want to make sure they're going to land where I need them. And then to remove the backings, I'm using the take your pick tool. You could use your fingernails. You could, I just find this easier. You could use the point of your little snips, whatever works best for you. I'm going to double check that I got all of them by touching them. Oops, I missed one here. So we'll grab our fingernails here. There we go. Then we're going to land this right on top. And what we don't want is any paper showing. 
but that just gives a little dimension and shows off our paper underneath and nothing's showing from the back. Okay, let's fold our paper. Our card's gonna go this way, fold our card rather, not our paper. I'm gonna just line things up a little better here. And this is going on here. And I'm gonna use just a little bit of liquid adhesive on the back. Whatever adhesive you're most comfortable using is the one you should use. You're just gonna get better results with it. I like the liquid adhesive because it gives me a chance to kind of move things around a little bit. So let's do that. You don't need a lot. This liquid adhesive is really strong. And for me, it's easier if I open my card, like so. So if it's flatter, then let's do this. And I think I'm gonna put it kind of an angle. All right, this metallic is really popping on here. And then when I got that far, I felt like I still needed a little bit more. So I grab the gold glitter enamel dots. I keep mine in a clear stamp case because I end up, keeps them from popping everywhere else. It comes, you have a number of dots and they come in all sizes. Well, four sizes. Let's take, I think I'm gonna take the second largest. And I'm just gonna grab three of them. It's always nice to use your embellishments in odd numbers. And it's a little more pleasing to the eye if you can put them in a roughly rectangular shape. Rectangular, sorry, triangular shape. Let's try that again, like a triangle. There we go, those are done. And this card, how quick was that? From start to finish, this card is done. It would be a great card for a Thanksgiving card, a thank you card. A friend of mine made a card like this and is using it for a fall wedding she's going to next weekend. All kinds of uses for this card. Just a thinking of you card would be great. Okay, our next card we're gonna make is a Christmas card. And look how different this card looks from the other one and it's, they're both really easy. For this card, I'm using a paper pack called Poinsettia Place. It has some beautiful winter prints on it. And we're going to I'll pull that out of the way. We're starting with this piece. And again, all the dimensions you can find on my blog along with a supply list. And I'm going to attach this. And I determined my size by looking here. I didn't want to cover up any of my gold, so I cut this mat so it just touches those four points. And then I went down an eighth of an inch for my paper card front. And again, I'm going to stick with a liquid adhesive. Stamping Up has a new adhesive out called Seal. That's also great to work with. We have a Seal and a Seal Plus. But again, use the one you're used to, you're most comfortable with, and you'll have the best results. So let's line this up like so. And I just want a little bit of that soft suede mat to show all the way around, which I have. Then we're gonna attach the mat to the card front, like this. And we're gonna attach, so, and as I showed you, and the nice thing is this print doesn't really have an upside or a wrong side, so we'll go that way. Oh, best not to drop your adhesive, Joni. So we're gonna go here to here, like so. And if you do like I did and drop your adhesive, all you need to do is just get it off of there. See how quickly I can get rid of that? There we go. I am going to grab a new clean sheet for us, though, so that I don't get any adhesive on the back of my project. I, I love these grid papers. I'm kind of a sloppy crafter, and more than once they have saved me. So let's add another piece there. Okay. Now, I have a stamped image on the front. So to do that, I grabbed this stamp set, Poinsettia Petals. It matches, it comes in the same suite as the paper pack, and I'm gonna grab from there warm wishes from our home to yours. I already have it on a, mounted on a block. These are called photopolymer stamps. 
They're clear, they're easy to see where you're stamping, but they don't have as much of a pad or a pushback as our red rubber stamps do. So I use a, a mat under them. I just feel like I get a better image. And I cover the mat with just a grid paper. Okay, so when I'm inking my stamp, I don't wanna push really hard because then the ink's gonna push away from the ink pad and that's not what we want. So you can tap or you can do a little twist. All right, I'm gonna go straight down when I'm stamping. Count to five, come back up. Look at that, all right. I'm gonna set that aside and while we're inking, let's also stamp the inside. I'm using a Stamparatus to stamp the inside. I love this. I feel like it has saved me time and product. It's a stamp placement tool. I've drawn lines where I want my card to be because I'm gonna stamp multiples of these and I don't have to set it up every time then. And once I drew this, I just laid my stamp on the grid paper to make sure I was straight. It comes with really strong magnets. You might notice the lovely flamingo duct tape I have on mine. If I duct tape the corners, if they fly together, I have little handles to pull them apart. And they can fly together and shatter. And by having the duct tape on, they're less likely to shatter. I'm gonna use the same thing I told you before. I'm gonna tap or twist. I'm gonna close and give it some muscle. And that looks great. If I didn't like it, like I missed part of the M or something, because nothing has moved here, I can just re-ink and stamp again. But we're good to go. So we're going to get that out of the way. Let's talk now about the front. So I have warm wishes from our home to yours. I'm using the Label Me Fancy Punch. And I'm going to line this up from the back so I can see where I'm punching and kind of get it in the center. Looks like I want to go just about there and punch. And when I set that up before, I laid it on here and felt like it kind of got lost on the paper. It's a busy paper. So this green in here is garden green, so I grabbed a scrap of garden green. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna make another punch. We'll get that out of the way. Now I just want a mat and I want a little bit on each end. So the easiest way for me is I just trim off each end. Oh, anywhere between three quarters and one inch off of each end, like so. Get rid of that. And again, grabbing my liquid adhesive, I'm gonna put just a bit, really nothing at all there. And I'm gonna line that up on one of those I cut off. And what I'm doing is I'm lining it. I'm gonna bring it up to the camera so you can see. So that you don't see any of the green top and bottom. You just see it on the end. I'm gonna do the same thing again here. As you can see, you don't need a lot of glue. And I'm gonna attach it right here. Yeah, and I'm just, that green glue gives me a couple minutes here. Minutes, not really maybe more like seconds, 30 seconds or so, to set it up. There we go. Now I could come back to those dimensionals I used before and pop it up, but I'm gonna add some more bling to the front of this, so I think I'll just glue it flat, like so. That's gonna go here. And where you place it doesn't matter. I mean, it's wherever it looks good. I feel like I have a kind of an empty space right here, so I'll just pop it right there. Get it down. I'm gonna go back to those gold glimmer dots I used before, but now I think I'll use the little ones. So let's grab some of those. And again, I'm using my take your pick tool. And we'll throw one up here. We'll grab another one and kind of throw it there. It's wherever it seems to work for you, but odd numbers seem to work. And again, triangular shape. Sometimes they want to pop right off for me, and sometimes they want to give me a little trouble. Let's go. I'm thinking I want to go down a little bit. There. 
and all we have left, that inside that we've already stamped is ready to go. We're going to put that on the inside of our card. All right. How quick and easy was this, guys? You could make a lot of Christmas cards with this design. And you really could just stamp right on the card base. I'm always afraid I'm going to muck it up. But you could stamp on the card base, and if you did muck it up, you could cut a piece of very vanilla, like I did, and stamp your inside. So we have two really nice cards that took us hardly any time at all. They already have their matching envelope. So we're all set. We have a fall card and a Christmas card. If you're looking for other new card ideas, I include a card project with supply list and directions in my Sunday night email. You can sign up for my email on my blog, www.scrappingwithjoni.com. If you'd like this video, I'd really appreciate a like. Give it a hands up down below. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Until next time, keep crafting. Thanks for joining me.